Welcome back. Welcome back to our series lectures for protection and reliability. In the past two videos or two lectures, we started the protection of a high voltage transformers. In the first lecture, we discussed the type of protection available for different types of transformers. And we divided the transformers into rating types, locations, and voltage level. We discuss the fuse characteristics required if you have a transformer protected using fuse. And also, in the previous lectures, we discussed what's an instantaneous overcurrent relay. And then, last lecture, we started the percentage differential uh, relay design for a single phase transformer. We explained the concept behind the percentage differential relay for a single phase transformer. We showed the circuit analysis and we did an example as well. Please refer to the previous material for a quick revisions because the concept of differential protection it's exactly the same for a three phase and a single. Before we go into the three phase differential protections, I want to highlight one element regarding the inrush current. If we are going to energize a transformer, a single phase transformer, for example, without the secondary side connected to any load, I will have an inrush current. The inrush current is due because the magnetic field go into saturations. When the magnetic field go into saturation, the current magnitude on the primary side will go up and it depends, the magnitude of this current will depend on the magnetizing curve of the system when it go under saturations. This magnetizing and this current and this inrush only happen on the primary side, not on the secondary side. Also, we have one more advantage as an engineer to resolve this issue. We have noticed this very important. Be careful, pay attention to this. Engineers, engineers noticed that the inrush current is made almost full of harmonic, while the fault current, the normal fault current, is made purely from almost purely from a fundamental frequency. That's why it is possible for us to design a harmonic restraint relay to avoid tripping our differential relay under a rush current and will be a false trip. I wanted to clarify this point before we go into any uh, discussion for a three-phase differential protection. Now, let's start our three-phase protection. Three phase transformer. The concept of differential protection is exactly the same. I need to connect a CD. This is phase A, for example. This is phase A. So I connect a CD on phase A primary, CD on phase A secondary, and I'll take him down to a differential relay. This differential relay, it's the same concept. I have to make sure that the difference between the two currents below my setting limit. One more thing I have to be careful now. For a single phase transformer, I have one CT on the primary, one CT on the secondary. There will be no phase shift. When I have three phase transformer, Pay attention. I can connect delta y. I can change it to y delta. I can also change it y y delta delta. If you recall, when you convert from delta y, there will be a shift of 30 degrees. This is very important for us to take note of the 30 degree shift. Otherwise, I will have a false operation of my differential relay. 
I would have a false operation at the differential relay because of the 30 degree shift. That would be false because the system is operating at the rated condition, normal condition, but because during my design, I didn't take it into consideration. How do I do this? The best option, I found the best option to explain this concept is to use an example. We've already, we have already discussed and studied the concept behind the co-differential protection. So let's use an example. How can we mitigate the 30 degree shift during the design of the transfer? Let's start. I've already sketched this circuit on the board. And I have a three phase transformer. I have 34.5 kilovolt on the primary. I have 500 kilovolt on the secondary line to line voltages. And I have 500 MVA three phase transformers. I need to protect my transformers. So I need to put at the input. What, where's my input of the transformer? This is my input of the transformer. This point, this point, and this point. This is my output of the transformer. As I discussed before, I need to make sure the input and the output are the same. Otherwise, if I have an input value and I have a lot of losses before it reaches the output, that means I have a fault within the transformer. To protect my transformer, what I do is I will switch, I will isolate the power for this transformer. That's the same concept we discussed before. So the first step is, the first step is, I need to calculate the current. How do I determine the CD? Same as we did for the single phase. All I do now is, I will determine the current. I will, let's call this IA, this is B, and that's C. I want to find this current. How do I find this current? equation s let's go to root 3 d line i line conjugate this is the line current this is s so now for me i have 500 10 to the 6 equal to root 3 multiplied by 500 10 to the 3 by I conjugate line, which is IA. Now I can find IA, IB, and IC. What I have to do is a shift angle, same magnitude. So, first of all, I calculate IA, IB, and IC. And then I'll determine the size of my transformer. Let's do the calculation. Let's do a quick calculation regarding this element and then, okay, I did the calculation. I did the calculation. I used phase A as a reference. That means phase A has a zero angle. Then I added minus 120 plus 120 degree. That's what I did. So I applied this equation. Phase A is a reference. I added 120 degree for phase C. Minus 120 degree for phase B. And I put this these other answers. 577.35 plus J0. The current IB minus 288.67 plus J500. And C minus 288.67 plus J. Sorry, this has to be minus J. This is minus J500. Now, I need to go back. This is, I found this. Now, I go back to calculate on the prime. Has, has to be very careful now that this current phase will be the same inside the delta. When it goes to Y, when it goes to the line, I have to add a 30 degree, J30. I have to add a 30 degree to this system. Please remember this concept. Remember this concept. I started from the secondary. I found the current in the secondary because this is a Y. 
that means the same current, this current, will go through the winding of the transformer. And because the transformer from winding to winding, I have no phase shift. But this is a delta. So if this current in this winding, the current in this winding, it's the same as the current in this winding from a phase point of view, then this will have a J E exponential 30. That means I have a shift angle of 30. Exponential of J 30. Remember this concept. So now, if I am going to find this ID, what do I have to do is, I have to multiply the system. I have to, this ID in here, this IA, this IA would be equal to, pay attention to IA, would be equal to 510 to the 6 divided by 34.5, 10 to the 3, multiplied by 3. I have to in here to do exponential of J30. That's very important for me to add this exponential of J30. This, because the line, this line is a reference zero. That means this here, the angle is zero. Because I'm working now on this system, I have from a delta, from a phase current in a delta, to line current in a delta, I have a phase shift of 30 degrees. And that's what we've done at the beginning of this course. We spent two weeks, two lectures, with a lot of examples, homework, quizzes, regarding this concept. That's now where we use it. So please keep this in mind all the time. In a transformer, if I use this as a reference, that's why I have to use phase shift of 30 degree on the side. Okay? Now, I'll write down I'll write down the actual numbers uh, and all I have to do now is I add 120 minus 120 degree on the other on the remaining two and that way I will be able to find the entire uh, system. Is that clear? I think that's should be clear enough. All you have to do is now pay attention about the theory degree shift. That's it for now. Now let's write down the current magnitude on every single on every single phase. Now we wrote down the answers. So for IA for this phase, I have seven thousand two hundred and forty six point three eight plus J four thousand one hundred and eighty three point seven. Phase B, because it's now 90 degree, because of the 30, now it's 0 minus J, 8,367.39. For C, minus 7,246.37, plus J, 4,183.7. Great, now I find the current. Remember, what I did is, I started from the secondary. I took the secondary as a reference for current point of view, to have an angle 0. Then I went back and calculated the primary current because now it's a delta, not a y. If it was y, y, I would have no issue. But now because I have a delta, I have a shift degree of 30, I have to take it into consideration. Now, the next step, the CT, I will start finding the CT ratio. Okay, How can I compensate for this 30 degree? I have to be very careful. To compensate for the 30 degrees, I connect. This is a delta. I connect, I connect the system in here, the CT system, the three CTs, I connect it into Y configuration. And into Y, the secondary into Y, I will connect the three CTs using delta configurations. So I can eliminate the 30 degree shift. Let's start now. Because this connected into Y, Anything connected into Y, the phase current and the line current is exactly the same. Because the CTs are connected on the primary side into Y connections, that means I have no problem because the phase current that goes into the CT, it's the same as the line current. So therefore, in this case, I have the magnitude of my current, the magnitude of this current is 8,376. So that's why I can use on the primary side, on the primary side, 
I can use a CT of a ratio 9000 to 5. Because the magnitude of this current, the magnitude, is 8367. That's a magnitude of the primary current, IA, IB, and IC. So I choose a CT ratio of 9000 to 5. Okay, beautiful. Now, when I use this, the second recurrent of the CT, in this case, I have my CT secondary current will be equal to 8367.39 multiplied by 5 divided by 9000. The answer of this one will be 4.65 amps. Will be 4.65 amps. This value will be the output of the CT on the secondary, on the sorry, on the secondary side of the CT on the primary CT. So now the output of the primary CT will have 4.65 amps as a magnitude current, as a magnitude current. Now let's go back to the secondary CT. Perfect. Now, what will happen to me now is, remember, this current, this current, need to go down to a relay. Let me draw this for you guys. Let me allow me to remove this so I can draw it. Just remember, the current is 4.65 amps. Now, this CT, let's get rid of this so I can draw it properly. This current in here, it's going to go to a relay, same for this current. It is going to go to a relay. Now, this current, I know it is in a magnitude, it's 4.65. I know this has to be 4.65. I need to have a similar value. I have a thermal magnitude perspective. I need to have a similar value of 4.65. This is the line current. I hope, I aim, I'm aiming to have designed a system where I have a differential of zero under normal operation. So what I do now is I need this magnitude of the current. This magnitude must be designed for the same as this magnitude or this magnitude, depending on your direction, whichever you want to choose it. Now, this 4.65 amps, this 4.65 amps, because this system we agreed is connected to delta. Look at this, uh, look at this scenario here. These are my CTs are connected to delta. I have now this current in here that is going to go up is 4.65 amps in magnitude. In magnitude, what would be this one? This current is divided by root 3. This current now, this current that comes out of here is divided by root 3. So therefore, I need a CT that have a secondary output. Remember, secondary phase output, because this is a delta current. I need to design a CT now, based on, based on this system. On the secondary side, I need a secondary side. CT should have a output current, phase current, should have a phase current, should have a phase current of 4.65 divided by root 3 in magnitude. Which this will give us, this will give us 2.68 amps. It's equal to 2.68 amps. So I need to design a CT that it will give me 2.68 amps. Remember, this is my magnitude. So I need a CT. I need I have a CT. My input for it is 577.35. I need to get out of it on a phase 2.68 amps. 
So now I can determine my CT ratio. My CT ratio now will be 1000 to 5. If you do the calculation, this CT ratio will be 1000 to 5 as a CT ratio. Let me go one more time through the process that we went through. One more time. I have a three phase transformer it's connected into delta y, primary delta second y. I went into the y conditions. And what I did is I used this condition as a reference. So I A has an angle zero, B minus 120, C plus 120. Perfect. Then I went and I calculated the line current on the delta side of the primary of the, tra of the power transformers. I took into consideration the shift degree of 30. If this has an angle zero, this has an angle zero. Therefore, in here, I will have an angle of shift angle of 30 degrees. Perfect. Then I said to eliminate the 30 degree shift, I need to swap the phenomena. So this delta, I connected the CTs, the three CTs, one, two, three, into Y. So the CT on this side, they will be connected like this. Into Y. I connected the three CTs on this side into Y, and then I connected the three CTs on this sec on the secondary of side of the power transformer into delta. Into delta. Perfect. Now this current, I needed to match this current for the relay, for the relay to give me zero output. For the differential relay to give me zero different current. I have to match the line output line current of the primary CTs with the line current of the secondary CTs. So therefore, the secondary output of the CTs is the phase. Now, because it is connected into delta, I have my CT to give me 4.65 divided by 3 is 2.68 amps as an output. So now I need a CT ratio that if I have 577.35 will give me 2.68 amp as a phase current. Because it is delta, this reflects to a 4.68 amp magnitude into the line. Which means when it goes to this CT, they will cancel each other. They were supposed to give me a different the difference of, uh, of zero. Is that clear? Is that clear? Okay, now one more element, and that's how I specified the CT ratio. Now, when it comes to the error, to the K, I have the same error for a mismatch. So, same what I did in a previous, in a previous video. I have to take the relay, does it have any tap? If it has any tap, I will take it into consideration, no tap. I will take, if it says one, only one tap, which is five amps, I will do the errors, and I add the errors. So mismatch error, it's the same concept as a single phase. That's one element. Number two element is, I will have under load tap changer. Does it have, yes or no, I will eliminate it. Then I will have CT error. The type of CT that I used, of course, has an error. We already did it before. And the last one is your margin. I hope that's clear. Now, one more element before we finish. I wanna show you how do we connect the CT is under this condition. Bear with me a moment. I need now to delete all this to give room. In this case, I have three CTs. I have three CTs. In this case, also I have three CTs. How do I connect three CTs into Y? So all I do is I connect one side of it like this. This system, 
will go like this, will go like that, and this is my three output. This is my three output. As you can see now, what I did is I took the city. Remember, this is my city. This is my city. This is my city. All I did is I connected this side and I took output of this side. That's it. Why connected? Because that's a delta. On this side, how do I connect delta, guys? Do you remember how do you connect delta? So if I have, let's draw it, let's draw if I have a three system like this. How do I connect delta? This one will go to this one. This one will go to this one. This will go to this. If you guys remember this, so now on this side, on this side, I can go like this. Okay, on this side, I can connect this side to go to this, and on this side, So it doesn't have to be too complex. So it doesn't have to be complex. Let me make it a little bit easier for you. Let me make it a little bit easier for you. I will have this CT1, this CT2, this CT3. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. How do I connect this into series? So what I do is, it's easier for me, I sketch it like this. This is my first one. This is my second one. This is my third one. I put, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Look, I connect one to six. I connect two to three. I connect 4 to 5, and I connect 1 to 6. Is that clear? See how I can, how I can connect them? I have to keep in mind the polarity, you know, the dot. Depending on where is my dot in here, I will take it into consideration. But that's how I connect delta. And now I have from 1 to 6. So I have an output from here. This is one of my output. The second output from 2 and 3. This is my second output. And then between 5 and 4, which is this is my third output. This is my line output. This is my line 1, line 2, line 3. This is line 1, line 2, line 3. And all this will go down to the restraint, will go down to a restrain we'll go down to a restrain circuit let me show you how the restrain circuit is connected the actual uh, relay so now I have one CT, one CT, one CT. All this as a Y, and in here, I have one current goes in, one current goes in, one current goes like this. Perfect. In this system, I have a delta. In this system, I have a delta output. I will have a delta. This current will goes down into E. This will have something like this. This will go to the negative. We will draw it soon. The system in here will go down to this relay. The system in here will go down to this relay. These two the system in here will go down the negative in here it goes down to here the system
this time. That's a primary site, CT1, CT2, CT3. This is connected to Y, and this will go down to CT4, CT5, CT6, and this is connected to Delta, and this is will go to the restraint, the relay for differential. I hope that's a clear. And that's how we design a three-phase percentage differential relay. And these settings, I will set the current to a certain value. If my value exceeds, if my differential, if ID exceeds my setting, it will trip. It will isolate my transform. Before we finish this session, I wanted to recap quickly. To what we did. Number one, during this lecture, we spoke about the inrush current if the actual transformer is energized with no load on the secondary. And we spoke about the inrush current that it's purely made or almost made of harmonic, while the actual fault current is made of a purely or almost purely fundamental frequency. Then we started the trans three phase transformer differential protection. There is a very important element. Number one is I need to make sure that I take into consideration the shift angle between delta and y. When you have a delta and a y, when you have a delta, for example, I have the phase current and the line current are shifted by 30 degrees. We discussed this in detail during our first two weeks of this course. Please refer back to the material. That's one element, it's a very important for me to note. The second important element is, because of delta y, because of this 30 degree shift, I need to eliminate this 30 degree shift. How do I do this? By the CT on the delta side, I connect it into y. The CT on the y side, I connect it into delta. That's the second important element. The third important element, when I connect the CT into delta, I need to take into consideration the line current and the phase current magnitude. There's a root three difference. Because I need to choose the CT ratio to give me a phase current that reflect the desirable line current. I hope that's a clear. Thank you for listening. And let's now do a example together. I will post an example now on the board and let us solve it together and discuss the result. Thank you.